Hello friends, it's Funky Play Brothers, and please remember to subscribe to our YouTube. And they were unboxing, I mean reading, He Man's and the Master of the Universe, Tales of Eternia, Netflix, a Netflix animated series. The The Hunt for Mossman, New York Times bestselling author, Gregory Mon, Book One, and we're at Chapter Five. Two years earlier, the jungle home of Tiger Tribe. Still, how is Skeletor King? Now let's read. Two years earlier, the jungle home of the Tiger Tribe. Chapter Five. The village of the Tiger Tribe was in a frenzy. Ever, every adult cat and human was. Busily preparing for the next day's fest festivities, long tables were set with silver bowls for the tigers, plus plates and goblets for the humanoid members of the tribe. Drums were arranged on the bandstand. A small stage for honored guests had been rolled out into the middle of the central village square. Tigers and peoples were argued over how to string the lanterns across the clearing as 14-year-old Adam peered out through his window watching it all. This was the start of his eighth year in the tribe. Cringer, one of the older tigers, had found him abandoned in the jungle when he was just six years old. Back then, Adam had no memory of his earlier life. He didn't know where he'd come, come from or whether he had even had parents and a family of his own. The only clue to his royal roots was the oversized gold bracelet-like cuff on his wrist. But no member of the tiger tribe actually suspected he was a prince. Once a year, the tribe hosted a ceremony to induct new members into their family. The party was filled with music and food and games. It lasted almost an entire day. The ceremony was always one of the highlights of the year, especially for, for Adam's friend, Crass. This one was different, though. Crass and Adam wouldn't just be watching. They were the two guests of honor. The ceremony, the feast, the music, it was all for them. Of, all for them. The Tiger Tribe had been treated Adam had like one of their own since the, that day Cringer found, found him. And now they were doing, going to make it official. The next night, he was going to get his stripes. How could he be expected to sleep. Adam was the ideal age for a human to be inducted into the tribe. Crass was a little young, but she was so eager to join that the elders made an exception. Unlike Adam, she still remembered her family and the terrible crash that ended their lives, leaving her alone and stranded in the jungle. The tiger tribe rescued her and raised her like one of their own cubs. Now Crass was eager to return the sentiment swear her a lot El elegance and her stripes so naturally she couldn't sleep either Adam heard the thin door between their small rooms brush against the dirt floor of their hut I can hear you he said I can't sleep she confessed hurrying over to sit at the foot of his cot me neither I am admitted the main door to the hut swung open as Cringer softly padded inside. Don't be nervous, Cubs, he said. You're both ready for the honor, and there are signs that tomorrow will be momentous. The sky is filled with stars. The jungle is quiet. There are even a chance that we might have a special guest at the ceremony tomorrow. One of our sentries spotted signs of moss made in the woods. Adam and Cress both laughed at first, thinking the tiger was choking or telling them some kind of... Fanatical bedtime story, yet Cringer insisted that Mothman was real. No way, Crest shouted. I heard he can brush a building by wrapped it in one of his branches. Cringer laughed quietly. I'm not sure if that's true, he replied. I never saw him do that anyway. Wait, I'm sitting up. You know him? You're Yes. Years ago, when I was a cub, I knew Mothman well. His real name is Krenaton Horosh. Seriously? How are we supposed to remember that? Adam tried to think up of a suggesting that rhymes with nothing. He's a moss man, cross decided. Let's stick to that. Tiger nodded and said it fold into a more comfortable position on the ground and one foreleg resting atop the other. Crass and Adam joined him on the floor of the hut. 
leaning back against Adam's cot as they listened. You were really friends with him, Adam asked. Cringer nodded and began the story. One day, long ago, he raced into our village. He left the patch of forest where he first sprouted roots in hopes of seeing more of his be of our beautiful planet. When we met, he'd just become come from the Badlands, a terrifying, lonely, dis desolate place that I hope neither of you were neither of you has to see. I suppose our Vulcan tribe were attracted to him after spending we spending attracted to him spending time in such a barren wasteland. He taught him our ways and played simple games. One morning he we played hide and seek. My friends and I found each other one by one, but by the end that of that day we still hadn't discovered Krennic. A few of the tribal elders insisted that Mossman must have continued on his journey, so we gave up search. And that was it? No, Cress. You didn't let me finish. So when what happened? A month later, the same friends and I were playing in a beautiful tree outside the village. We knew the jungle well, but we'd never noticed this tree before. And we were climbing and leaping around its trunks when it suddenly shook us free. In a low rumbling voice, it asked, did I win? Mossman didn't move. Adam asked, seriously, Cress reply? He'd played for a month. Time is different for his kind. Cringer continued, members of his species lived for thousands of years. A month for Krennic was like an hour for us. We cheered our new friend as soon as the whole tribe had come out to celebrate his victory. He was swinging cubs from his branches and tossing them playfully into the air. We really did feel like family. The elders of the tribe were so enamored with our new friend that they offered him a place among us. Cress jumped to her feet and clapped her hands together. Mossman is Tiger Tribe? That's epic. Let me finish, Cress. He was almost Tiger Tribe. The ceremony was all was ready due to take place the next day. The village square was decorated as it is now. The entire tribe was ready to give him his stripes the night before I went to check on him and found that he was in the midst of uprooting himself. The transformation was startling. The branches, the cubs, had been swinging and retracted. His roots combined and formed human-like legs, and he slowly assumed his former shape, half boy, half plant. When he saw me, he tried to run, but I was one of the fastest cubs in the tribe. I raced past him and blocked his way. I asked where he was going, and he admitted that he was planning to flee. Naturally, I was hurt. As you both know, earning one stripe, one's stripes is a great honor, and he was rejecting that chance. How ungrateful, Crass said. Maybe it didn't feel him right to him, Adam countered. Maybe he felt like it wasn't really his home. Cringer eyed him curiously before continuing. I asked him, but Crant never explained why he left. Still, he returns now and then, passing through the jungle quickly never settling long enough for his roots to take hold. I wouldn't be surprised if they room, the rumors are true and he really is in the jungle tonight. Someday I'll show you the place where he established his roots. It's near the winding stream of the northern path. There's a small mound sprouting all kinds of different flowers and herbs. It's a sacred place for me and a reminder of the sand city of home and family. They lay in silence for a while until Cringer stomped a paw against the ground. Now, enough tales of Mossman. The two of you need sleep. You have a big day ahead of you tomorrow. The tiger left their hut. The village soon turned quiet. Well, mostly quiet. Crass was snoring like a pound-dwelling Caribbean four. Tiny little four. And Adam couldn't sleep. He rolled onto one side, then another. The golden cuff slid down his wrist as part of the as part of the ceremony. He was, he was expected to sacrifice something from his form life and the mysterious golden cuff was the obvious choice, but Adam wasn't ready to give it away. He loved the tiger trap. Cringer had become like a father to him or a very furry uncle anyway. And Crass was like a little sister and often annoying, but ultimately 
endearing sibling, yet some part of him hoped that he would find his family again one day, his real family, and his real home too. Was that why Mossman had fled? He was looking for his home. Adam rolled back from one side of the bed to hit a uh, side of his bed to the other. Certain that was going to be a sleepless night. His window was open, the cool night air flowed into the hut, and he decided that there was only was only way to find out why the legendary creature had chosen not to join the tribe. Adam had to find Mossman himself. He crept out of the hut quietly, then followed the northern path out of the road. There was no guarantee Mossman would return to the spot where he'd once rooted himself. Adam wasn't even certain the creature was in the jungle at all, but the place Cringer was had, had described would be a good starting point. At least Adam ran at a steady pace, swinging from vine to vine was faster, but he hadn't mastered that. Yet the jungle grew darker by the minute. Tall trees blocked the night sky near the tiger tribe base. The jungle floor was wide open and clear, but but here dense growth packed both sides of the trail. Adam was f about to stop for a breath when he heard the sound of a slowly flowing water. He broke off the path and into the brush, pushing his way through. He followed the noise to the winding stream. Winding stream then hurried along its edge. He could feel his pulse pounding at a bend in the stream. He came to a clear with a high dirt mound in the center. He stepped closer. The mound was covered with thick green moss. He pr pressed his hand into the moss, then lifted it away and watched as the imprint of the figure slowly disappeared. The clearing was quiet, peaceful, and it smelled terrible. Adam gagged as a horrible odor filled the air. Did Mossman have a gas problem, Adam stumbled away from the mossy mound, but the stench was all around him. He backtracked blindly, one of his heels caught on something. He lost his balance. Suddenly, the ground beneath him fell away. Adam plummeted backward into darkness. And that's the end of chapter one. And apparently, Moss Man makes the horrible, horrible, horrible stench there they've been talking about for four chapters and did nothing about it yet besides seeing how far it went. Next time, probably next week, I'll read chapter six of this book, which needs to explain a lot. So, friends, thanks for watching. Like. Comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Follow us on our social media, Funky Play Brothers or Funky Play Bros. Support our vlog at Cash App, the dollar sign Funky Play Brothers. Thanks for watching. Bye.